Hi, I wanted to take you through how I built this churn model uh, comparison dashboard. I built this using Random Forest, XGBoost, uh, and Logistic Regression. I was able to put this in a uh, in Python and then run it all in Power BI and be able to evaluate the accuracy as you see here on the right side in terms of how well it predicted churn using all three of those algorithms. Uh, just a quick review of the dashboard. You can see that we had uh, 7,000 uh, rows of data. Um, the churn that was in the actual data set was 26 percent. You can see the predictions using random forest, XJBoost, and logistic regression here and see which one did the best in terms of accuracy, uh, prediction accuracy, and churn. Uh, we can look at the features that went into these algorithms and you can see there are 45 different features. That's after it's been, um, you know, one hot encoded. And then we can see feature importance and the average accuracy on each one of those models. So I'm going to walk you through the code and then how I pipe this into Power BI. So let's get started. So uh, what I'm using is a Telco data set. This data set can be easily found on Kaggle. I'll also put a link in the description uh, for the file that I have on GitHub. It's just a CSV file. So the first thing I did was load in some of the essential libraries. And those are pandas, numpy, and then I imported warnings so I can filter out any warnings that pop up. Um, so I loaded the data set in using pandas and saved this as the variable df. You should probably save that as data set if you're going to be using Power BI. Um, so I checked the head of the data and we can see the first five rows here and all of the different um, features. For example, we have customer ID, we have the gender of the customers, they, whether you're a senior citizen, the partner, dependents, uh, whether they have a partner, phone service, internet service, and then eventually m whether they churned or not. The majority of these are categorical features and we have some numerical. So I took a what I did is use df.columns to see all the columns and I dropped the customer ID because that's not going to have any bearing on our model. I use a df.info to get the, the information on each one of the columns. So you can see the majority of these are objects and then we have some numerical features here and then we don't have any null values on any one of our um, columns. And we have 20 columns in total and 7,043 rows of data. So the first thing I wanted to do is replace the churn column with ones and zeros because if we're going to use this in a psychic learn or machine learning model we need to ensure that everything is numerical because that's the way the algorithms read it so i just used a replace function and replaced yes and no with ones and zeros and then i did this in place so it would remain the next thing i noticed is the total charges uh, was uh, in an object form if you see here so I turn that into numeric using the pandas function to numeric then I looked at the info to check to see if that uh, worked then I wanted to check if there were any null values once I switched that over using df is null function and then using any and some and there's one 
So I dropped all the NAs and said in place equals true. Then I wanted to take a look at the two columns, tenure and monthly charges, just to see um, where the max and min was using a df.describe. Next, I wanted to see how the numerical features were correlated. So um, we actually have uh, tenure, monthly charges, total charges, and churn. We have senior citizen here, but I think that's um, probably not correct because um, senior citizens are probably a one or a zero. So I, what I did is do a correlation function so we can see what correlates here. Then I decided to use the get dummies to one hot encode or turn all the categorical features into numeric. And then I checked the head and you can see now we have for our categorical features of like gender, female, is it going to be saved as a one or zero? And all of those are going to be turned into ones or zeros. And just to double check, I have the types and we can see that they're all numerical out of the 45 features now that we have done the um, one hot encoding that has increased our features. I didn't drop any of the rows. It might have improved the model performance, but I didn't. Next, I created a X and Y variable. So X is going to be all the features that I want. Those are the dependent features. And then Y is going to be I target or uh, which is going to be churn. So I save that in the variables. Then I started to load in our algorithms. I wanted to use random forest classifier because we're trying to predict churn. So this is a yes and no. Um, so we're trying to predict the class in a sense. So we're using classifiers, logistic regressions. Um, I, I brought in the random forest classifier. Uh, I brought in um, the logistic regression and XG boost. Um, and then I use a train test and split. Um, and it looks like I brought in um, random classifier, random forest classifier twice. And there's an error here. Let me run this again because I forgot to put a parentheses. So I'm just going to run all of that. So what I was doing here is I wanted to create a table where I can see the model performance. So I built a data frame to hold it. And I am going to put the score in the title of the algorithm there. So I first start creating um, or instantiating the algorithm. So I brought in random forest. I saved that as RF and RF fit. I fitted the, um, well, I skipped a step here. We also need to split the data between train, test, and split. So we can use a train, test, and split algorithm that to split the data between training and test sets. Once I have that, I am able to fit the training set to each one of our algorithms. So I fit that with random forest by calling the function and then fitting and then using a prediction and saving that as ypred. For logistic regression, I save that as ypred2 and fit the data on that algorithm. And then for XG boost classifier, I did the same and save the prediction as ypred3. We don't need this because we already have done this. So then I started loading. So I'm going to cut this out. Uh, I started loading in the random forest score, the logistic regression score in the XG boost score and I save that in our data frame called model eval and then now we can see 
the accuracy of each one and we can see that they're pretty much similar in performance. Uh, so we can see that that has 80% uh, accuracy and uh, for all ones XG Boost has an 81% accuracy. Then uh, I saved this as a pickle file. I thought I was going to be able to bring this into Power BI but I wasn't successful just but I saved this as a model uh, called model so that you can it's like a serialized version of the model then I wanted to see the feature importance and put that in a data frame or a table and we can see which features were most most important for churn and I want this all in my Power BI work my Power BI dashboard. So of course we need to modify all of this code to fit into Power BI. So if I go over to my Power BI dashboard and we can see how I modified that code. So I'm going to go to transform data. So I've loaded in um, the data here and what I'm doing is I've just created copies of the data set because I want a couple things from this and I'll walk you through how I what I've done is I've duplicated the data set in four times and I'm going over and then I have my Python code running here and you can see the output of this particular Python co code is a table with the score and the algorithm here and let's just look at the code so that is the modified code I'm loading in the algorithms importing pandas and then dropping uh, the customer ID replacing churn and then going through the same steps that we went through but in this one I would like to get the tables that are created from this code and you can see that we have several tables because these are all data frames right so what we get from running this code is we get the data set which is everything we get the model eval which is our, our data frame that saves all of the scores we get the X's X test and X train and what that is doing is allowing us to choose one of these so we can represent that as a table I chose model eval so you can see that once I've run that code I've just said give me this and then I just change the type to numeric and then the next one this is the whole data set that I've brought in the next one I've run Python code again and you can see now I'm bringing in the modified data set with the zeros and ones and I did that so I could count the features and then I'm bringing in the last data set with Python so we've run the code and you can see that we also from our file we have weights so I was able to get the feature importance and we saved that as a data frame called weights and I wanted to have that so we could visualize it in our workbook so let's go over to our workbook and we can see that one thing I was able to get is I was able to get the weights and that was in a data frame called weights and we brought that in if I show you the tables if I click here we can see that we have the feature importance from that data frame and all I did was turn that into a bar graph and did some conditional formatting the this comes from our output that is a um, the churn for each one of those algorithms so you can see we have the churn for random forest here so how did I get that let me go back over to our 
oops, let's go back over to train, test, and split. So what, let's look at the Python code. And what I did was I ran the algorithm to predict on the total data set and give me the prediction and save it in a column on our data set. So let me show you what that looks like. If I, if I go over to the data set and we can see our new columns are random forest and obviously this is zeros and ones and I change the type and then you see I replace those zero one, zeros and ones with yes and no. So then when we come over to our file here, we can count the churn for each one of those models to get the percentage. The accuracy comes from our um, model eval data frame. And that allows us to visualize everything in this method. Um, if you're wondering where the icons came from, you can try a website called Flat Icons. A lot of good icons there. Um, this is a, a pretty good representation of churn. I think that's really digestible. If you have any questions or, or any opinions or any ideas, please let me know in the comment section below. I definitely want to produce a full course on how to use Power BI and, and Python together. Let me know if you're interested in that to see if that's worth my while. I hope this helped. Thank you.